One year ago, we purchased this Integer 25R motorhome. In this video, we're going to dig into all the warranty issues that we've had to deal with, as well as talk about all the things that have gone great. And we're going to answer all the viewer questions that you've sent in to us that you've had about this rig. Let's take a deep dive into this Integra 25R. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're here parked in the driveway in Long Beach and uh, doing some maintenance, getting ready for the next season. And uh, this video is going to be about uh, a response to the video we did with the six month review of the Integra 25R which like 25,000 people watched that video so far, which is just unbelievable for us. Uh, even Matt at Matt's RV Reviews left a comment, which I'll kind of go through in a little bit, which was awesome. Uh, just to know that there's a lot of people in the RV community watching this video. So I want to take it to that next level because a lot of you reached out and commented and said, hey, we got some follow-up questions. We love the video, but... And so this video is going to be about all those follow-up questions where we take that deeper dive where people who are really interested in maybe buying this unit want to see, hey, uh, how big is that bed on the dinette? Uh, where do you put a CPAP? Well, a pair of golf clubs sit in the back. So we're going to dive into uh, all those questions that the viewers have given us and um, let's learn together, okay? You know, there's some things we need to discuss that have broken on this unit that have to get taken care of. And uh, some of them are pretty, like, not functional problems, but some of them are like cosmetic issues and things that you, if you didn't care, you could live with it. It doesn't really affect the way the RV runs or works or performs. But, uh, you know, some of them are starting to add up. So let's go through the list. Okay, so we had a water leak and it caused some damage. You can see the, the swelling and it's making the paper peel right there on that corner. But all it was is the hot water heater, those connections right there, the hot one, uh, where the, the uh, PEX line enters the hot water heater, that connector was just finger tight, loose, and it was dripping out of there at a pretty good rate. And all we had to do is take off the inspection panel, tighten up that connector, and the water leak stopped. So, you know, this is one of those things, familiarize yourself with your motorhome, and that way when a situation like this, it doesn't completely ruin a camping trip. So I was kind of overwhelmed, the idea of fixing a plumbing leak, but all we took off was that grate was hooked on these squares, four screws, and it gave us access to all these panels, which I would have never opened. And this is something I could do myself, even if my husband wasn't here. So how we found the leak might seem overwhelming was we just took off that inspection panel, that inspection panel, and that inspection panel, opened the drawers so we can see back behind there, and took that drawer off there so we could see the sink. And then we pressurized and turned the water on and had the three of us look and see where the water was leaking. And sure enough, it was leaking right there out of the out of the uh, water heater. Another place you wanna look is in the cabinet right by the front door. There's easy access to more plumbing hoses. You can see, um, just follow the line, see where the leak is at. This is another place we were watching for a leak. But just to give you an idea what's under the rig, that inspection panel there, that's your furnace. And under here is uh, the wiring. Um, yeah, that's your, your, your box right there. And then the wiring for a lot of the system. So you don't want water leaking under there for a long time with all that wiring and power and stuff that could cause some, a short and a fire. And so uh, if you've got a water leak, you gotta take care of it. But uh, that ducting right there is for the heater. Um, you can see it goes to the vent right there. So. This is the rig. This is a deep dive from this rig. Uh, I've never seen a video with a, di a dive this deep. So just to give you an idea what you're looking at, here you go. Another warranty issue. It's a known problem with Integras that almost happens to everyone that I've heard of is this front shade. Power shade that goes up and down is broken. So uh, definitely one of those things has to get fixed. So one of the major warranty issues we have are these brown spots on the um, floor. You can see they're pretty much everywhere. Um, they use some bad glue, so the whole floor is going to have to be replaced. Not fun, but it is what it is. It's a, a known problem that they've had with a lot of the uh, integrants that we have. This window here is broken, and we have to kind of have it taped shut because there's two arms in here. If you look right there, those two arms, there's two little welds here. The weld on that front window broke. So that's definitely a warranty issue uh, that they're going to have to fix so to recap the warranty issues we had the front shade flooring spots the window arm was broken water leak under the cabinet 
the tanks were mislabeled backwards. We had a heating pad delaminate, and then there were two Ford uh, chassis recalls and a leveling jack recall as well. So our first question comes from James Park. He wrote, why don't you use the generator while driving? So first of all, we do use a generator while driving. I think this was in response to me showing how you can run the TV off the Blue Eddy. Uh, but the generator takes about a half a gallon an hour. So at $5 plus a gallon, right now what we're dealing with all across America, six bucks and a lot of places here in California, I mean, three bucks an hour to run your generator. If it's really hot, I'll do it. Uh, but it's a lot cheaper to run that Blue Eddy and run the TV or whatever small things you can run uh, off the Blue Eddy as opposed to the generator. And another thing I want to talk about generators that people don't talk about a lot is these generators, and this isn't advertised, but these little Onan generators, um, they do not have an oil pump in them. They have what they call like a slosh style oil lubrication, which is basically the piston as it goes up and down, it sloshes oil through the system. Um, so they don't have long lifespans. And that's why when you rent a generator, they charge you like five bucks an hour or something like that for every hour to use the generator. And the reason why they do that is because they're basically charging you up front for the next unit that they're going to have to buy and put in the, in, in the motorhome. So keys to this is that um, use it kind of sparingly and make sure it's serviced every hundred hours, period. You need to service this thing regularly because oil is the lifeblood of that little uh, generator. They do a good job of draining all the crappy gas out. So the old days are like, hey, you gotta go out every 30 days and run it for half an hour. I mean, not so much with these as some of the old units. The, the gas drains out of the carburetor pretty good on these. But it's not gonna hurt if you run the thing, you know, for a few minutes, 10 minutes, you know, once a month or something, it's still gonna be good for the unit. But they do have a shorter lifespan, so a lot of people don't talk about that. But uh, the next video I'm gonna do after this one, uh, I'm probably going to service it myself and show you how you can save a lot of money because they charge you a lot of money to service generators. So it's super simple. Uh, anybody with you know nominal uh, mechanic skills can, can service it themselves. So um, yeah, that's a good question. Thanks James for the question. Um, you know, it uh, generators are definitely going down the road. If you need your air running, you gotta fire the generator up. So um, if it's hot and we're traveling down through the south, like we're going to Disney World again, across from California here in a couple months, I guarantee you we'll use the generator here and there uh, to kind of help keep the cab at a decent level. The front cab does a pretty good job, but when it gets really stifling, you gotta run the back AC for a little bit to kind of keep that cab temperature down. Okay, so the next question is from Rage5606 and Ariel and they both wrote the same basic question. I really need to know where you place your CPAP machine in the main bedroom area. So it goes right above uh, the bed in the cabinet. Uh, there's a power plug there and it's real simple the power cord goes up and then the hose coming down with the mask kind of right above where your head is it's very nice you can roll over and stuff way easier than a normal bed where it's laying aside from you so it kind of comes down from the top i'll show a picture of it uh and and you can see but uh yeah it works real good with the cpap the only thing is you don't have a power unless you're hooked up to um something but you can run a cpap off that blue eddy so uh that's that's good as well so Thanks for that question there. Uh, the next question, uh, David Nichols wrote, my wife and I are golfers and want to know if our golf bags will fit. Um, and then kind of a next follow-up is Mike Downing wrote, what are the dimensions of the rear storage compartment? Thinking about two electric bikes. I don't know, if you have those fold-up ones that might fit, it's pretty big. The door is a little bit smaller, but let's go back and measure. Let's go check it out right now. So there's the storage bay in the back and uh, we'll show you the dimensions put them up on the screen now but just to give you an idea of what fits in there that chair this chair that barbecue that chair footstool a couple fans a couple chairs the width you've got 22 the height you've got oh, just under 26 25 and a half and the depth is about 54, 53 and a half. Okay, the next uh, question comes from Pras Vieda wrote, can you tell me what size bed the dinette converts to and is it comfortable for an adult, a six foot tall person? So I'm six two and I can tell you, I don't really fit, I'll show you. We'll convert it and I'll get a tape measure and let's check it out.
So that's the bed uh, that the dinette turns into. And uh, we also have a pad that we keep under uh, this bin here that we use on top of it. So it's really comfortable, but it is kind of short. So I'm gonna kind of get in and lay caddy corner and kind of show you how snug it is for person 6'2". Okay, so I'm laying caddy corner. You can see I got my head as far to the corner as I can. So I'm laying diagonal to make it as long as I can. So let's see where my feet are. Okay, there you go. My legs are pretty straight. I still got a little room, right? You can see if I go this way, I gotta bend my knees. But if I lay in a diagonal, it works. 6'2". Okay, uh, next one is from Mark Edson. He wrote, hey, great video, but how does it ride? The ride issue may not be a concern when riding in the front seats, but what about at the dinette? I rode on a dinette in a Sprinter Class C one time, and it rolled like a boat in the ocean. Um, I think it rides fine. I tend to get car sick too, and I don't get car sick back here. Even I like hanging out. Uh, the, seat, the theater seats have seatbelts, so most of the time when my wife's driving, I'm taking a break. I just kick back in the theater seat, put my seatbelt on and try to snooze a little bit and, um, you know, rest and relax. And I don't get green back here at all. So if it rolled like a boat in the ocean, trust me, I would get green. Uh, even my daughter tends to get really car sick and she doesn't get car sick riding back here too. So I think it rides good. Um, when a big van or something or a big rig or something passes you, uh, it will get that, you know, side to side kind of sway thing going on uh, for sure. So I'm sure you could you know, pay a lot of money and, and upgrade the suspension or something to kind of mitigate that a little bit, but it's not to me bad enough to do anything about. So good question. Um, I think it rides good back here, uh, but you know, Integra does have a higher end ride system. Um, so they got built in like stabilizers and stuff back there that I've seen. So I can crawl under there and take a look and show you what that stuff looks like, but um, good question. Okay, MP Road. So far I'm really liking what the Odyssey brings to the table but I will want to install solar panels, lithium batteries, and a prep wave router with an antenna. I really like you showed where the batteries are. So I'm taking that comment as a hint, hint. Can you show us if this rig is prepped for solar? So yes, it is. There's a connection on the top, on the roof. I'll try to get the drone up there and take a shot of it. And then the connection is in one of the, uh, for the solar um, controller is in one of the boxes down here on the outside. It's not in the inside of the cab, it's on the outside. Uh, but it's already pre-wired and prepped for solar. So yeah, it should be pretty simple. Put a couple of uh, panels up on the roof. Uh, they're, it's already pre-wired, so you just install them and plug them in. It should go pretty quick. So um, yeah, uh, it is prepped for solar. Okay, I'm gonna call this next comment uh, the good suggestions category. So S Thrasher wrote, why not find a 12 volt power source that runs off the engine alternator and use it to power an inverter for the TV while you're driving? That's actually a really good idea. I actually thought about it. I just didn't wanna run a wire all the way underneath, uh, the, you know, the, the chassis and up through the TV and all that. But um, you're right, with these 100 amp alternators, it would totally work um, easily. So um, I would imagine too that if you got one of those refrigerators that ran on 12 volt all the time, that would be killer because you could just run off of an inverter uh, the whole time, run your um, refrigerator and have the alternator charge up the, the batteries while you're driving. Um, so yeah, you totally could. Uh, good, good suggestion. Then James Machado wrote, I love your gadgets. Maybe make a video just about the gadgets. So that's my wife. She buys a ton of those things. And there's one she just got that I'll show you. Uh, it is the coolest thing. It's a little portable hand blender that's like really small and compact and it charges with like a phone charger. And the thing works awesome. So that is definitely one of the things that uh, we, we use for gadgets. Okay, so we got the Happy 14 family, Donald Kersey and Marty H, all three of you uh, sending questions about uh, the, the tire section of the video. 
Uh, well, first one is where did you purchase the valve stem stabilizer that is holding the rear inner valve stem? Uh, the answer is that came with the coach, uh, but they can be bought at pretty much any like AutoZone, Pet Boys, O'Reilly type auto stores. Uh, you can get all that stuff. Donald Kersey wrote, hey, they make an extender for the valve stems. You're right. <laughs> and it would be a whole lot easier to get some of those in uh, and fill up the tires. I just, you know, sometimes, yeah, you're right. Good suggestion. Uh, Marty H wrote, you may want to install some valve stem extension for the inner and outer tire for easier access. So Marty and Donald, uh, good job. Uh, you have taught me something and that's what it's great about this. You guys teach me, I teach you, uh, and we all learn and get better together because um, really that's that's what this is all about is education and safety and safety comes first and you can't put a price tag on that. So uh, very good suggestions there about the tires. Uh, again, uh, right now, let's talk about tires. With gas at five, six dollars a gallon, um, tire inflation is huge in getting you the gas mileage you need. Underinflated tires waste fuel, uh, inflate them to the proper levels, make sure they have all the air in them they need. That will really help your fuel economy. And it can help quite a bit too. Another thing that will help fuel economy a ton is to slow down. And I'm telling you, in this rig, if I drive 70, uh, I'm getting probably 9.3, 9.5 miles a gallon. If I get down to like 55, this thing will get like you know, 10 and a half to 10.8. So you don't think that's a big deal, but I just did the math. If I could drive at the speed limit uh, in California, it's 55. Well, no, that's not true. Motorhome, if you're towing anything, uh, it's 55 in California. Now, motorhome, you can drive carpool lane, drive where you want. But if you just slow down a little bit, which is safer, we've all driven these, we all know it is safer to drive uh, at a slower speed in a motorhome. Um, if you slow down, you can get another mile and a half a gallon. Well, when you're taking a 5,000 mile trip, uh, that's a lot of gallons of gas. It's the math, it's three, 400 bucks. Uh, if, you know, now it just can take extra time uh, to get there, but um, you know, it's uh, definitely can sell, help fuel economy by slowing down, slowing the rig down and to keep it at a, at a decent speed where the, you know, the vehicle's running at lower RPMs. So by far the coolest comment we got um, was from Matt and Andrea at Matt's RV Reviews and they wrote, great video, thank you so much for the shout out. Uh, just the fact that somebody like that, you know, big YouTuber with, you know, 100,000 followers plus actually watched my video, uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, thank you very much. We love you guys. I watch all your videos uh, and you would really have done all of us a great favor by um, really just showing us all these different rigs that on our own would take weeks and weeks of time to drive to every different dealership around and go look at these models that may or may not even be on the lot. So, I mean, it really, uh, no, I can't stress enough how much uh, watching uh, Matt's RV reviews really helped us pick the right unit for us. So. Yeah, can't say enough about uh, watching videos and getting as much education as you can, uh, just so you make good choices and uh, really the education too that you can get from watching oh even like a kyd and mark and all his suggestions those are really good too i mean he does a fantastic job with that e3 of showing you how to do stuff um thanks for watching guys we really appreciate you watching the channel like comment subscribe if there's anything else i missed that you want to see or talk about uh let me know in the comments and we'll try to address it and show you uh what's going on in here but uh thanks for watching